Hey everybody, how's it going today? I hope everybody's having a wonderful blessed day. Today I want to talk about I can't wait till Sunday morning to get my praise on. Today I want to talk about I can't wait to, for Sunday morning to get my praise on. I'm going to take my time here in this video and allow God to give me the word to say to edify the body of Christ as much as I can and give us all something to think about. Because oftentimes... I hear some people say, I can't wait till Sunday morning to get my praise on. Question is, what's stopping you during the week to get your praise on? You get where I come from. Most people, this I love, most people tend to wait on Sunday morning inside of a church building to get their praise on for the Lord. Some people wait on Sunday morning to get their praise on for the Lord. You get where I come from. See, worship music is a wonderful thing, but however, our praise of worship is our everyday lifestyle choice decisions we make. You get where I come from. Music is icing on the cake, okay, because the Lord does want us to praise Him with music also. But when you limit praise of worship to only music, that's where you get yourself in trouble. See, you don't have to wait on Sunday morning to get your praise on. You get where I come from. You don't have to wait till then. So I mean, see, when you think about those that are homebound, how would they get their praise on if they're not able to attend the church building? How would they get their praise on if they're not able to attend the church building? If you get where I come from. Because most people inside the church building, most of the congregation members inside the church building wouldn't drive an extra 5, 15 miles out of the way to go pick somebody up and bring them to a church building just so they get the praise on because it cuts into their family time, it cuts into their me time, it cuts into their buffet time at the church, it cuts into their uh, shopping time at the church, you know, during the church building. You get where I come from. See, when most people need to realize is, let me say it this way, most people need to realize is we are the church, the body of Christ, the body of believers. A church building is just a comfortable place to meet up and learn about the Word of God and how to become a stronger child of God, okay? Now, nothing wrong with calling yourself a Christian. That's a wonderful thing, but however, it's not about who you call yourself, it's who you are. You saw me. Because most of the time, some people say, oh, I'm a Christian. But you can't tell they're a Christian during the week if you get where I come from. See, if you want sinners to be led to Christ, you got to bring that light with you everywhere you go. Not just, you know, sitting inside the church building Sunday mornings, okay? I mean, not knocking that. That's a wonderful thing. But however... Your praise and worship go beyond the church building walls, okay? You could praise God in at your job. You could praise God at school. You could praise God around your family members or any kind of you know gatherings that you have with your family. You can get your praise on. You know what I'm saying? By living by living who you claim you say you are, okay? See, this out me. As a legally blind man with low vision, my eyes are like a video camera that is not zoomed in on a particular item. If I didn't have a way to a church building, now I could still get my praise on. You know what I'm saying? I could still praise God. I could still get on fire for the Most High Yah, Jesus Christ, God, Jehovah. You know what I'm saying? Because most of the time, some people that are homebound, and I say it all the time, but majority of the time, the homebound people are more for real with the Lord than the ones that are faithfully inside of a church building playing Christian Sunday morning. I know it's a kind of ruffle some feathers there, but it's being honest here. Because some people put so much emphasis on the building, but they don't go out and reach out to the body of Christ or reach out to the lost. That's all I'm saying. Because most people are stuck in you know, the church building, you know what I'm saying? Because when you go out and witness to somebody and you go out and uh, spread the word of God to somebody, that's a blessing you get where I come from. 
See, I will have to wait on Sunday morning to get my praise on. I could praise the Lord mowing the yard. I could praise the Lord at Walmart. Anywhere I go in general, I could give God honor, glory, and praise anywhere I go. You could say that this right here is a church if you want to. But I'm just saying, anywhere the body of Christ meet together, where two or three are gathered, I'll be in the midst, says the Lord. You see what I'm saying? But what, that's what most people don't understand. You see what I mean? When true praise and worship starts in your own home, that's a blessing. When you feel the most high dwelling in your home, that's a blessing. You see what I mean? Some people say, I feel a certain way inside the church building, which is a good thing. But who's stopping you from feeling that certain way inside of, a, excuse me, inside of your home? Who's stopping you? You see what I mean? Who's stopping your praise of worship inside of your home? Who's stopping you from raising your hands inside of your home? Who's stopping you from praying inside of your home? Who's stopping you from reading the Word of God in your home? It's all I mean. Who's stopping that husband and wife from praying together and praying for each other instead of down on each other when they have a disagreement? Who's stopping them? You get where I come from. You pray for your family. You pray for your friends. You pray for your co-workers. Anybody you cross paths with, you pray and uplift them and ask God to give them guidance or directions to give them strength to go through today and any other day of the week. And you get where I come from. Because the, the, the Holy Spirit is not limited to a church building. So I mean, see, how is it we got so many churches on one block, narrow one of them get along together? Some of them are beefing with each other. Some of them can't stand each other. Some of them are envious of each other. Get where I come from. We have so much mess and so much dysfunctional stuff going on inside church buildings that need to be addressed and fixed and set free of and sorted out. You get where I come from. So it's a blessing when he has the true church buildings out there that's operating in the most high sub divine order instead of meshing confusion about all of confusion to get where I come from. See, when you think about the true body of Christ gathering together, it's not just limited to a church building steeple. Uh oh. See, you can gather together with your brother and sister Christ anywhere. You can gather with your brother and sister Christ online. In fact, three years ago today, most people were crying about Oh, I can't get my praise on anymore. The government does shut the church down. <clears throat> let me get a cup of coffee on that. Now, let me say this. Let me make this point. You say a church building is God's house, right? How in the world does the government lock God's house? Uh-oh. You get where I come from. See, we are the true church God. We are the true body of Christ. We are where God dwells. Well, so we don't need a certain church building denominational title. So, I mean, the devil came up with all these denominations to cause confusion, to cause division. You get where I come from. You need to straighten up some of this mess of some of these churches. You get where I come from. Now, as I could say, when you get your praise of worship on daily, that's a wonderful thing. When people can see something living in you, they don't see on a day-to-day -day basis. That's a blessing. You see what I mean? See, you can witness to people about the Lord. See, they have a choice whether or not they want to accept what you say or reject what you say. The main thing is you can say you tried. Though they rejected what you said. You get where I come from. Because that's the beauty of God's free will. Because God didn't create robots. So, I mean, God didn't create us to be robots. People have their own free will to choose or reject what God has for them. That's what most people don't understand. See, what do you think about, okay, let's talk, well, let's uh, go to the parents, okay? <clears throat> you love your children, right? You give them free will to choose, right or not, once they get 18, to either go the way you taught them or go against your way you taught them. See, they have that choice unless you lock them up in the house and 
make them stay in her house. I mean, though they're on up in age, you get where I come from. But you gave them free will choice. You saw I me. Mean? That's why God is with us. You saw I me. Mean? That's why God is with us when He gave us free will. See where I'm getting at. See, I could praise God anywhere I am. I could get my worship on anywhere I'm at. You saw I me. Mean? See, these videos could be me praising God for things that He done for me. Just by posting a video of the Most High's Word. You get where I come from. Because any, anybody can praise the Lord everywhere they go. I can praise God on a more. I mean, I can praise God while I'm mowing the yard. I can praise God while I'm uh, doing house chores. I can praise God while picking up sticks. I can praise God while doing yard work. I mean, they ain't nobody stopping me for praising the Lord. You get where I come from. Just like some people say, Oh, they took prayer out of schools. Question is, who took prayer to you? Hmm. So I mean, who's stopping you for praying? So I mean, who's stopping you? When you put that when you put the word of God back in your homes and you put prayers back in your homes, now that's where it all begins. Because that's where it's why the Bible says the judgment starts at, in the house of God. And the Bible and the Bible also says it, it all starts at home. So, I mean, see, when you bring forth the example of how a child of God should be, that's a blessing, okay? Most people, they just got so caught up on it, got the emphasis all caught up into going to a church building, but most people live a totally different, opposite lifestyle outside the building, and you can't tell they've been, been inside of a church on Sunday morning. That's what I mean. See, like I say, some people may look at me weird if I say praise the Lord inside Walmart. I don't care. They can look at me crazy. You get where I come from. If somebody wants to look at me funny if I say praise the Lord in Lowe's or anywhere I go in general because I let the Lord's light shine through me anywhere I go, they want to look at me crazy, go for it. It's what I mean. It ain't about what people think. It's about what God thinks. It's all I'm saying. See, that's your true praise of worship. You don't need to wait. On a Sunday morning to get your praise and worship on. So I mean, because some people get so hyped up for Sunday morning church building a service, but they don't stay hyped up during the week. So I mean, some people get so hyped up for the church building a service, but they don't stay hyped up during the week. How do you expect your spirit man, spirit woman to stay strong? I only have a spiritual food once a week. You need that daily, just like you need your natural food daily, just like you need your fleshly food daily. You, you just can't eat a buffet on Sunday morning and expect to be full during the week and do your job like you're supposed to do when I get weak and tired passing out. So I mean. See, your praise and worship is every day. It don't matter what they decide to go to a church building on, but the question is, are you living what the preacher is saying, though? Uh-oh. Are you living what the pastor is saying? See, you can read the Bible and study the Bible from cover to cover, upside down, backwards and forward, but if you're not applying it to your life, it's not going to do you a bit of good. You get where I come from. Set aside construction manuals on how to put things together. You get uh, instruction manuals for projects that you buy from Walmart or anything you're going to put together. What good is that instruction manual if you're not going to use the instruction manual? If you're not going to apply the social, it's the uh, instruction manual to do the job right, you get where I come from. See, most people just get their emphasis on, well, I got to go to church to get my praise and worship on. If you want to limit yourself to a church building, knock yourself out. But me, though, I get my praise on there every day. And so, I mean, I don't have to have music in order to get me all hyped up. When the Holy Spirit hypes me up, I mean, praise God, it's hard to sit still sometimes. And so, I mean, <laughs> I mean, when you feel the Holy Spirit moving in, that's a wonderful thing. That's like I say. When your relationship with the Lord is every day, that's a wonderful thing. Because let me get close with this, because not everybody is promised a Sunday. 
Not everybody's promised to see a son. You see what I'm saying? Because I could say, if you get a chance to witness to somebody and lead them to Christ instead of just, oh, kind of my church building. When you, when you can lead somebody to the Lord, that's a blessing. You don't need a fancy sermon in order to tell somebody about Jesus. You don't need some kind of fancy sermon in order to tell somebody, hey, God could deliver you only if you're willing to allow God to deliver you and you and him work together and you'd be delivered from whatever you're going through. You don't need a fancy sermon in order to say to somebody, hey, you don't have to keep on living that wicked jacked up lifestyle. So if they want to live that life, that's on them. But if they choose to reject that old wicked lifestyle and and, and, call, and, get the, and call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to deliver them, that let all be glory to God, okay? Because not everybody's promised the Sunday. It's easy for people to say, hey, come to my church building. But can you lead people to the Lord, though? Can you witness to people about the Lord? Or are you just letting the pastor do everything for you? It's all I mean. But as I can say, see, a pastor, he could tell you about the Lord. He could preach to you about the Lord. He could talk to you about the Lord. He could lead you to the Lord, but he can't leave he can't live your life for you, okay? Just like a person could, you know, watch these videos over and over and over and over and over repeat loop. But I can't live your life for you. <clears throat> you gotta work out your salvation with fear and trim. You see what I mean? Because you have a choice how strong your relationship with the Lord becomes. You have that choice to decide who you stand with. You saw me. See, a person could tell you, hey, you could do this, you could do this, you could do this, but until you put action on thing that person doing this, sitting there, to stand there talking at you, they might as well just go ahead and talk to that oak tree up there outside that window there. You get where I come from. See, that's the thing about true praise of worship. When you're not afraid to witness to somebody about the Lord or bring the Lord up in your conversations with people you come cross paths with, whether it's at school, work, college, wherever you're at in life. When you're not afraid to tell people about the Lord Jesus Christ as it, and tell them about what God has done in their life and what God will do for you, that's a blessing. So I mean... Because most of the time, that's the only time you see somebody with their head bowed praying when it's when they're inside the church building. You get where I come from. You don't even see people in restaurants hardly with their head bowed and they're, and they're praying for their food before they eat it. You get where I come from. I don't care if somebody looks at me weird if I'm standing there praying. I don't care. You saw me. Just look at me weird. I don't give a crap. <laughs> as long as I please in the most high, that's what matters. You got where I come from. It's what you call standing for what you believe in. You see what I mean? It's called standing for the one you love. You see what I mean? Because like I can say, <clears throat> if somebody looks at you crazy because you're praying in in, uh, in uh, Walmart, somebody looks at you crazy because you're, you know, praying in a restaurant. Let them think you're crazy. Because I can say, let me ask, say it like this, the Lord has given me this, this, this to say. What about losing? Say some people be like, you know, especially like some of these atheists, my cousin is an atheist. I hope to pray that someday that he will accept the Lord Jesus Christ and become a believer. But see, let me ask, say this. What about losing? If I was to die right now, and find out God's fake the easy way. What about losing? Versus being an atheist. F dying right now and finding out God's real hard way. Who could blame God? Who could blame God for like, well, you, you don't believe in me. You just went against me. You don't, you don't believe in me at all. So I'm going to depart from you. Who could blame God for that? It's all I me. Mean. See, I'd rather... Have strong faith built up and be set apart and be looked at as an outcast in society 
than to be playing a part on my way to the lake of fire. You get where I come from. So that's how strong your praise and worship is. It's more than just singing a few catchy songs. It's about letting your reality become your lifestyle. It's about living who you say you love. And so, I mean, even if it means that people disappear from you, you are not alone when you have God by your side. And so, I mean, when you have that strong relationship with the Lord, and people can see it in your face, people can see it in your actions, your attitude. See, when you spend more time praising God for what you have, instead of complaining, that's a blessing. You saw I me, mean? because sometimes some people they'll they'll praise God inside the church building. Now I've been guilty of that before myself. I'm not afraid to raise my hands. They would say, "Praise God for this, praise God for that." But as soon as they get out of the church building, they start complaining about stuff. Oh, I wish I had this. I wish I had that. But when you see somebody that's more or less fortunate than you are. Remind you of how blessed you really are and how much you need to start proclaiming instead of complaining. It's all I'm saying. When you're thankful for what God has blessed you with in life, it don't matter if you got people standing beside you or not. All that matters is that God is right there by your side. So, I mean, when God gives you that joy, when God gives you that peace, when God gives you that happiness that only comes from God. How can, the world can't take it away from you. So, I mean, when you're 100% content in the Most High, Yah, and you worry more about pleasing the Lord before you think about trying to please somebody else, that's a blessing. Because like I can say, when you love the Lord more than you love anybody on this earth, that's a wonderful thing because the Lord said, you know, you got to love me first before you love anybody else on this earth. If you love others more than me, then you're in trouble. And so, I mean, see, that's what people need to understand. When you true praise of worship, it's not just limited to a church building. It's a blessing because you're taking God with you everywhere you go. And so, I mean, I will close with this for sure. Sunday morning, church building is closed. That don't mean that God is just going to be like saying, okay, I'll see you next Sunday. It's all I mean. You get a hold of the drone room anywhere you're at. I don't care if you're at Walmart. Or I don't care if you're anywhere at Jerome. I don't care where you're at on side of the highway, wherever you're at. You can get in touch with the most high. You get where I come from. There's no distance between you and God. You could be on top of a mountain or in the middle of the ocean or out in the middle of the desert. There's no distance between you and God, okay? That's all I mean. There's no distance between you and God. Now, the only thing that's standing between you and God is yourself. Yourself is what's standing between you and God. When you get self out the way and allow God to give you a brand new start in life, now that's when you find out. I don't have to wait on Sunday morning to get my praise on. So I mean, because like I say, what people see it in your actions, what people see in your lifestyle, people see it in the choices that you make. That's a wonderful thing. Because when you have God's best, why would you want to settle for less? It's all I mean. When you sit back and you thank God for your family and friends. You praise God for things that you got. That's a wonderful thing. When you praise God for the simple health that you got, you're able to get up and walk around. You're able to get up and move those arms. You're able to see those two lights right there. You saw me. Yeah, that's talking to myself right there too, right? Starts with this guy right here. This most does you. When you praise God for the things that you're able to do every day, that's the more stronger your relationship comes with the Lord. So, I mean, I could be listening to the Word of God mowing the yard, picking up sticks and stuff. I mean, like I say, there's no distance between me and God. So, I mean, that's how your spiritual food gets, that's how your spirit man, spirit woman gets more fed and more stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger. 
is the more you take in the Word of God daily. So, I mean, but as I can say, you just can't eat a buffet Sunday morning and expect to do your everyday chores during the week and then go back uh, to go to crowd Sunday morning again and eat. You need that spiritual food daily because that's where you praise and worship. But that's what, hold on, that is where your strength comes from, your praise and worship. When you feel down in life, you praise God on, on, on in the valleys and you praise God on top of the mountain. Your love for God is still that much more stronger no matter what the circumstances are in your life because you trust and believe that God will bring you through whatever you're going through. He's going to make a way when it seems to be no way. He's going to break chains when it seems to be no way the chains can be broken. He's going to make things possible that seem impossible to you. So I mean... So I'll leave y'all with that. If there's anything y'all like to add or any feedback y'all like to, uh, you know, leave in the comment section and I, you know, y'all can leave that there and, uh, and I hope and pray that this uh, video is uh, helpful and uh, uplifting and encouraging to anybody. And if y'all, uh, you know, enjoy this uh, content here, you, you know, just feel free to subscribe and uh, like the video that way, you know, you can be notified when the video is uh, posted, okay? Because like I can say, uh, you know, some people don't get a notification and they don't know somebody posted a video until, you know, they, uh, you know, hit the uh, notification bell. You know what I'm saying? But like I say, but that's your choice. That's on you. I mean, like I say, if you're fed here, stay here. If you're not, I mean, I just pray you find somewhere that's where you've been fed, okay? You know what I'm saying? Just got to go where the Lord's at, where the, where the Lord wants you to be, okay? So I leave y'all with day. Y'all have a wonderful, blessed day. And I pray each and every one of y'all have a wonderful day in, in the Lord's name. And I'll see you guys back in the next video. God bless each and every one of y'all.